This lesson is on simplifying radicals. For a little review, let's think about what um, a simplified radical needs to have. And there's three things that we need to remember. Number one, no more roots can be factored. Okay, and then also the radicand is not a fraction. And no radicals can be in the denominator. So if those three things are true, then we know we have simplified our radical as much as we can. Thinking now about um, how we want to simplify radicals, there are some strategies. And we want to use the table of perfect squares and cubes to kind of give us um, a strategy that will make it a little bit easier. So here is the um, table of perfect squares and cubes. So if I took 1 and I squared, it is 1. Same thing, 1 cubed is 1. 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. So you can pause the video right now if you'd like to fill in your table with our squared numbers and our cube numbers. Once you have that, we can continue on with types of roots. And for types of roots, we're going to be looking at um, some different things. The index, the radicand, number of roots, and type of roots. Remember that the index is the number that would be right here. So if there isn't a number, we know that it is 2. Okay, that would be the index, and if there's a number um, there, it would be cubed or to the four, square root of four. I'm sorry, the square root. We would have the fourth root of whatever's inside the radicand. Okay, so first we'll start looking at the index to see if it's even. If it's even and the the number is inside the radicand is positive, we know that there will be two roots and they will both be two real roots, a positive and a negative. If it's even index and a negative number inside the radicand, we do have two solutions, however they're imaginary. Okay, a positive and negative imaginary number. We are not going to be doing those in this lesson, but it is good to know that there are imaginary numbers. Okay, but for this purpose of this unit, we're only um, going to discuss the even index is only the positive root. For odd indexes, there, when the radicand is positive, there will be one root, and it will be real, and it will be positive. If we have an odd index and a negative number, the number of roots will also be one, but in this case, it will be a negative number. Okay. One more thing, if the radical has more than one root, the radical cosine indicates only the positive root. Okay, so what essentially we're talking about is right here. If we're talking about even positive, we do have, like when we later uh, lesson we'll be solving equations, we will use the positive and negative. But for the purposes of just simplifying radicals, we're only going to look at the positive root when we simplify. And that's what the rad radicand indicates. So using this table, we can do some simplification. We're going to use our table of perfect squares and cubes to help simplify and the types of roots to help us make sure we're doing it properly. So let's look at number one. I have a 2 on the outside, and I want to break down this 45. And I'm going to be looking. It's a square root, right? There's no index. So we know that it's square root. And I'm looking for the largest perfect square that can go into 45. And I know that that's going to be 9. Okay, so it's 9 times 5. And I know that the square root of 9 is 3. So I'll pull out a 3, and I'm left with a 5 in the radicand. And when I pull that 3 out, I know that it's going to be 2 times 3, so I'll have 6 square root 5 as my final answer. And again, you always want to double check that these three things are true. There's no more factors, there's no fraction, and the, um, there's no radical in the denominator. Okay. Number two, I have the square root of negative 75. Again, that's an even index and negative. We're not doing an imaginary number, so for this, I would say no real root. And we're only looking for real roots, no imaginaries in this lesson. Number three, it is a fraction, so it's definitely not simplified. And if I can simplify the fraction inside, I could do that first, but it doesn't look like anything will 
simplify, so I'll do the square root of 11 divided by the square root of 36. And from there, I can see I'll have the square root of 11 divided by the square root of 36, which is 6, and that is simplified. Number 4, I have the cubed root, and it's positive, so I have one positive real solution. And in this case, I'm looking for the largest perfect or perfect cube that will go into 384. And I will realize that 64 does go into it. And when I say into it, I mean it can be divided by. So 64 times 6. So I know that 4 will come out, right, for every 3, oops, sorry, for every 3 of those. So I have 4 times 4 times 4. For every 3, because it's cube root, I can bring 1 out. So I have 4 cubed root, and left over is 6. Number 5 is a cubed root of a negative, so I know I have a 1 real negative. And I can see that I'll have 5 cubed root. When I break down the negative 16, I know I can do negative 8 times 2. And the negative 8 would be the negative 2 cubed, so I'll pull out a negative 2. And I'm left with that to simplify to negative 10 square root 2. And that square root cubed root. Forgot my index. All right, number six. We have a negative on the outside, and we have the cubed root of a positive. So I'll have one positive root. And I can see that 576 can be divided by 64 times 9. So I know that I'm going to have 4 cubed, so 4 will come out. And I'll be left with the cubed root of 9. go to the next page. Simplifying more radicals, but in this case we're going to have high index, higher index radicals. And we're going to use the index to indicate how many factors are needed. So for example, if we have the fourth root, it equals sets of four. All right, so we have, have to have four of some number being multiplied in order to pull it out. So if I look at the fourth root of 208, and this may help you. Sometimes I in general when we have fourth root and fifth root, it's a good idea to start with two or three. So if I have two to the fourth, I know that's going to be 16, and two to the fifth is 32. Okay, so those are common ones I might see, or three to the fourth equals 81, and three to the fifth equals 243. So those are common ones I want to look for first. And what does that mean? If I have 208, I want to see if I can divide it by, I need something to, to the fourth, so I want to see if 208 divided by can be divisible by 16 evenly, and it is. So I would say it's the fourth root of 16 times 13. And I know the fourth root of 16 is going to be 2, so I'll have 2, fourth root, 13 is left over. And if I do number 8, Another way some people prefer, and I should show you just in case, there's always a couple methods for anything when we do in math. Sometimes people like to break it down like this, where we do like the tree. Um, and so you could do 2 times 104, and then 2 times 52, and then 2 times 26, and then 2 times 13. And you could see it broken down this way, where our prime numbers are here. And you would say there are, see there are 4 2, so that could come out because there's we're looking for the fourth root, and 13 would be left over. So if you're more comfortable doing that, it's a little bit longer, but it works, and that's fine. Number eight, we have four times the fifth root of 486. I can see that 486 can be divisible by 243, so 243 times two, and I know that now I can pull out a three. So three times four would give me 12, fifth root, two is left over inside the radicand. Okay. One last portion for these notes. Simplify um, algebraic radicals, and that means we're including numbers and variables. Okay, so we're going to be talking about radicands have numbers and variables in them and simplifying. And how do we simplify that? Well, numbers, how we just did with the factors, and then variables divide the exponent by the index. All right, so let's look at number nine. 
for 20, the number 27, we have the square root of 27. And I know that that will be 9 times 3, because that's my highest perfect square, uh, square is 9 times 3. And then I can just leave this for now and look at this. What do we have here? I'm going to factor out a 3. And I see that x squared, so I'm going to take the exponent and divide it by the index, which is 2. And so thinking of it that way is x squared is x times x. So for every 2, I can take 1 out. And then for y, we have y times y times y. So for every 2, I can take 1 out. We know that 1 will be left over. So when you're doing an even root and you have an odd um, exponent, you know that 1 is going to stay in the radicand. So my leftovers, that's what to call them, leftovers inside the radicand, are 3 and y. And that will be your final answer, simplified. Number 10 is a square root again. So I know I have 2 times, I can see that my highest perfect square will be 25 times 6, and then I have x to the 18th and y cubed. So I know that a 5 is going to come out, so I have 10. 18 divided by the index of 2 is 9. y to the 3rd, so I know that there's a pair in there. So 1y will come out and I'm left with 6, there are no x's left inside, and there's just one y. Number 11, now we're doing the cubed root. So I'm thinking for my perfect cube, I have, that, go, that goes into 28, or 128, would be 64 times 2, then I have x to the 15th, y to the 5th, and z to the 3rd. So, I will pull out my 4, because that's 4 cubed, so 4. I do, do, can do 15 divided by my index, which is 5. y to the 5th. Now, if I'm dividing by 3, it, one y can come out, right, because I have 5 y's, and there's 2 left over. So it's almost like you're doing 5 divided by 3, and then what's your remainder? Oops, that's going to go on the inside, though. Put that here. So 2 is left, y squared, I don't want to forget that. And then z cubed, a z will come out. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And there'll be nothing, no z's left inside here, or x's. For number 12, I know that I have negative 14 and I have the fourth root. I should have hit my cube, sometimes I forget that. All right, fourth root. And I can see that um, if I look at my... Um, my little cheat sheet kind of a pair of the fifth root, I can see, or I'm sorry, the fourth, I can see that I'm going to use 81. So I would say 81 times 13. And I have x to the sixth, y to the 15th. So I know negative 14, oops, I'm going to take that. What's negative 14 times the 3 is coming out will give me negative 42. And I can look at my x's 6 divided by 4 is going to be 1x with a remainder of 2. And then I have um, the y's, 15 divided by 4. I'm going to have y cubed, right? Because it's 4 times um, 3 is 12. And then I'd have 3 left over. Okay, and that is your simplified radicals.